Vanillin is the major flavor component of vanilla and the majority of vanillin that is produced is used in food. However, vanillin is also a useful chemical precursor for other large molecules. I'm particularly interested in it because it's used as a precursor in the synthesis of capsaicin and other capsaicinoids. In this video, we'll be extracting vanillin from store-bought liquid vanilla extract. For this experiment, you'll need about 300 milliliters of dichloromethane, saturated salt solution, and about 500 milliliters of artificial vanilla extract. It is important to use the artificial stuff, which contains almost solely vanillin, whereas the natural stuff contains many more compounds. Also, the amount of vanillin in the artificial extract ranges widely, and the amount that you'll get will depend on the brand you use. To a separatory funnel is added 500 milliliters of artificial vanilla extract. The vanillin is extracted using four washes of 60 milliliters of methylene chloride. After each addition, the separatory funnel is capped and shaken gently in order to prevent the formation of an emulsion. The layers are allowed to separate and the lower dichloromethane layer is drained into an Erlenmeyer flask. As stated before, this process was conducted a total of four times. The combined dichloromethane layers are re-added to a now clean separatory funnel. The Erlenmeyer flask is washed with a small amount of DCM. 60 milliliters of saturated sodium chloride solution are added to dry the organic layer. After capping and shaking and letting the layer settle, you can see that the DCM layer is much clearer now. The lower, now clear DCM layer is drained to an Erlenmeyer flask and dried using calcium chloride. The calcium chloride is filtered off and the filtrate is filtered directly into a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. The calcium chloride at the bottom of the Erlenmeyer flask is washed with a small amount of DCM. A distillation apparatus is set up to remove and recover the DCM. At the end of the distillation, we are left with a yellow oil which is transferred to a beaker. The oil is allowed to sit at room temperature and it solidifies into yellow white crystals. This is then recrystallized using water, but it's important to keep the water below 80 degrees Celsius. The melting point of vanillin is around 80 C, and if you try to recrystallize it above this, when it starts to cool, oil droplets will precipitate out instead of crystals. After recrystallizing, filtering, and drying, I was left with about 0.4 grams of nice white vanillin crystals. The yield of vanillin was low probably for two main reasons the extraction solvent that was used, and the brand of vanilla extract that was used. I think a better extraction would be done if diethyl ether was used because this wouldn't form an emulsion and it can be shaken much more vigorously. The amount of vanillin in vanilla extract ranges wildly depending on the brand and for 500 milliliters it usually ranges between 1 and 4 grams. However, I did buy the cheapest brand and it's possible that it simply didn't have much vanillin in it. I actually don't like this method too much and I'll be uploading a video shortly on how vanillin can be extracted from vanilla sugar using methanol instead of dichloromethane. And here's the NMR of the vanillin which shows that it's relatively clean.